Hey everybody, welcome back to Monitor Comics. If you're a comic artist or a writer, I'm sure you've run into a problem similar to this. Okay, so I can't cut out any of these 30 characters. Every one of them is essential to the plot of my story. Each one has a three page long backstory, and it's vital to the plot to move it forward. So, now how do I handle... Oh, 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 I'll just introduce them all in chapter one. Hold up, just throwing this out there. If you got 30 main characters, I'm gonna need you to uh, change hobbies. Okay, let's get right into it. I recently had a comment asking me how to deal with multiple three-dimensional characters. If you want some more context about what separates a three-dimensional character from a two-dimensional character and a one-dimensional character, then be sure to check out my other video covering that. So, if you have your main cast of characters all planned out and you're satisfied with every one of them, the issue becomes how do you introduce them and present them to the best of your abilities so you don't overwhelm your reader. Chapter 1 is your most important chapter. It is your hook. If you're a writer or even a fan of comics or manga, I'm sure you've heard of the term three episode rule. If not, be on the lookout for one of my future videos coming up covering this. Essentially, the three episode rule just states that you have three chapters or episodes to pique my interest or else I'm dropping this work. Obviously, there are exceptions to this rule, but for the most part, this is how active readers behave. So the key to managing multiple three-dimensional characters is pacing. Remember, comics is a marathon, not a sprint. You need to pace yourself. Your first chapter should only seriously focus on your protagonist and maybe one or two other characters. You don't want to bombard your viewer with 30 characters right away, calling them by their name, and expecting them to remember them as if they're going to be essential to the plot of your story. That's right, The Society. I'm talking about you. Have any of you seen The Society on Netflix? How the hell did you expect me to remember every single character's name in the first episode? You threw like 40 kids at us, naming them all by name. And none of the actors have been on any other movies except like the one girl. So I couldn't even remember their actor names. Well, why would... Why would you do that? Take your time with your work and introduce each character gradually. If you focus on the protagonist in chapter one, then introducing one more character in chapter two and maybe another one in like chapter three or four, then there's no rush and you're able to tell your story in a convenient and straightforward way. Tell your story over time. This is good for your own sanity because you don't have to worry about several interactions between a giant cast of characters. This is also good for your reader because they'll be given some breathing room to actually care about the characters you're presenting them with. The anime and manga Dorara did a great job of managing a huge cast of characters. So if you want to further your research, I definitely recommend this work. What they did was cameo all of their important characters as two-dimensional or even one-dimensional characters while focusing on one protagonist at a time. That way, we are given an idea of who our character is as the protagonist in this episode, but we can also see future protagonists as side characters and background characters. But the story doesn't focus on them all at the same time. That wouldn't be digestible. So after several episodes, there was a perspective shift where the protagonist role switches to one of those side characters we saw earlier, making them the protagonist now. Our former main character is demoted to a one-dimensional or a two-dimensional character. This was a genius move because we know the backstory of each protagonist even if the spotlight isn't shining on them at every moment. This strategy of perspective shifting can be very effective if you want each character's paths to intertwine with each other directly or indirectly. The opposite route would be to do what Attack on Titan did and demote most of your cast to a two-dimensional character with an occasional one-shot episode specifically spotlighting that one character. So essentially with this model, you would only focus on a few of your characters at a time, present everybody else as expendable, and not essential to moving your plot forward. Every once in a while, you could present a side episode focusing on that character to create more opportunity for your readers to appreciate that said character. But like I said before, the key to managing a huge cast of characters is pacing. Introduce each character gradually, and reveal information about each character over the course of your story, not right away. Another strategy for effective managing of multiple characters after they've all been introduced is what's called the separation strategy. Basically, split your entire cast off into distinctive groups and use the meanwhile on the ranch transition to focus in and progress each story separately. 
If you've never heard this term, meanwhile on the ranch, it essentially means one character is doing his own thing, say he's on a basketball court playing a game, and then the camera would pan back out, show the city, show the sky, and then immediately go to his parents going to work. And that's a seamless shift of perspective to give two stories at the same time. By breaking your cast up, you're able to focus on several characters' interactions, but not overwhelm your reader by the sheer size of having so many characters together at once. Cage of Eden did this really well, with a class of 30 students being broken up into about 6 different groups, so this way we were easily able to comprehend who each character was after like 10 chapters, and understand what role each of them played to the essential overall story. By grouping your characters off, you'll generate many chapters worth of content, and it'll only benefit you and the reader in the long run. The opposite approach could also be very effective. The grouping model is a storytelling trick where your group is more important than the individuals within it. For something like this, you would gather like-minded people who are all two-dimensional characters and have them follow one single spokesperson. This way you can have one three-dimensional character to worry about and instead of 30 three-dimensional characters, you have a whole bunch of two-dimensional characters that basically stand for exactly what your spokesperson stands for. And this creates a large group presence in your work if you need a mob or a group or something like that in your story. To be honest, I'm more of a firm believer in the less is more ideology. So the tighter your cast of characters, the tighter your story's focus is going to be. However, if you find yourself with a colorful cast of characters, make sure they're all unique enough to the point that the reader can believe they deserve a spot in the story. An easy way to manage this is to make each character fall into a different archetype or trope. If you don't know the basic archetypes, keep a lookout for one of my future videos where I'll go over all of these. Having recognizable roles for each of your characters will give them a sense of purpose and will defer the reader from deeming them as a waste of space. I hope some of these tips helped you out and now you're able to conveniently explore your large cast of characters. If you have any follow-up questions, be sure to leave them down below. Be sure to check out the rest of my videos where I go over paneling, effects, how to make good characters, and how to pitch your story to a publisher. And as always, you can find the links to my social media accounts down below. I want to thank you so much for checking out this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.